Welcome to Worship at Abiding Hope Church. We're really thankful that you could join us for this Reign of Christ Sunday, the last weekend of our calendar, church calendar year. Thank you for joining us. As always, when we gather, we gather over the table. So we invite you to have bread and wine or grape juice available for that part of our liturgy. As we enter into the end of our year, we want to remind you that we are still receiving those intent cards from our Forward and Faith movement. Uh, we've sh been sharing our vision about how we believe that God is moving in us to choose love and choose hope in 2022. So if you've not filled out your intent card, please do that as soon as you can. It's really simple. Just go to abidinghope.org and right there at the top of the page, you'll see it's a place that says fill out digital intent card and we'll get that from you. And that would be a great way for us to plan for 2022. We're entering into the Advent season, and so next Sunday is our first Sunday in Advent. It also means that we're entering into our Advent worship season. How we're going to be doing Advent worship this year is they will remain digital. They will be online. They'll be at 7 o'clock on the 1st and the 8th. We're going to have a regular Advent worship experience online, uh, but we're going to invite anyone who would like to to join us in the building at, um, at Abiding Hope Church, where we'll watch the video together and then we'll commune one another so that you can still have that in-person experience. But on the 15th, our online experience will be Celebrate the Light. We want you to be sharing that link and telling people all over to come join us for that online experience. Um, Celebrate the Light is a tradition here that we have at Abiding Hope of celebrating the inbreaking of Jesus into a world in a season where the night seems to be crowding us in. We see the light is opening us up again. So come and join us uh, for uh, the online experience. At the same time, we're also inviting people to come into the building again on the 15th, where we will be watching it on the screen and then celebrating that together as community. Now, let us begin our worship.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Christ, you come to us as king, but not a king in the way of the world. You come to us to show us that you come to usher in the reign of God. And the reign of God does not use power, but uses humility. It does not use strength, but, but is grounded in weakness. It does not come to be served, but to serve. God, today in our worship, remember that we are called to experience the life that you have given us as your servants, as your followers, as your believers, not to wield power, but to surrender it, not to show strength, but to live in weakness and not to be served, but to serve. Strengthen our worship today that we might live more fully into your way of life. We pray all these things in the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own accord, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and happy almost New Year to all of you. And no, I'm not confused on what day it is or just really anticipating January 1st this year. You see, in the church, our New Year turns over with Advent, right? So the first day of the church calendar is the first um, weekend of Advent, which is happening next week. And, and so I've been thinking about this, this new beginning that we're going to have in the church, the way sometimes I think at the end of December about the new beginning of the year or maybe just seasons of life, right? When we start a new school year, we, we enter into this time of reevaluating what is important and what our, our goals are, what our values are. Or as my friend Rachel said to me this week, it's when we look back and see if we were a better or worse person last year and we strive to be a better one going forward. And so as we are anticipating the start of a new calendar year, I want us to hold that sense of evaluation and clarifying values as we explore our text today. You see, our text today is in the last few days of Jesus' life, and we have this very short conversation between Pontius Pilate and Jesus. And, and we see that Pontius Pilate is interrogating Jesus, but almost in a, in a playful way, in an exploratory way. You see, Jesus has been arrested, but he hasn't been arrested on any formal charge. Right before what we read today are um, the high priests debating, you know, with Jesus on what he did, and, and they're saying, well, you, you have been unfaithful, and Jesus simply says, I spoke the truth. And so the high priests take Jesus to Pontius Pilate, and Pilate is, is a governmental authority, so he's trying to figure out what the actual charge is against Jesus. So his question, are you the king of the Jews, is meant to trip Jesus up. He's trying to get Jesus to say, yes, I am a king, because anyone declaring themselves king other than Caesar was an actual offense that Pilate could have then tried. But Pilate's not quite sure why Jesus is in front of him. At the end of the day, Jesus is in front of him because he spoke truth to power, because he spoke the truth of God, the truth that love wins. He spoke the truth that everyone is important to the power structures of the world. And the power structures of the world were not huge fans of that. But, but Jesus doesn't get pulled into this debate. We find a very, a very consistent Jesus in our text today. We find Jesus consistently saying truth. 
right? Jesus responds, well, you say that I am. He's not getting sucked in. And then when he talks about his kingdom, Jesus says that God's kingdom is not of this world. And so when, when Pontius responds, um, when Pontius Pilate responds, so you are a king, he, he simply speaks truth, that Jesus came to show a better way, that that might be considered a king in our world, that Jesus, Jesus came to show a better way, to lead people into the way of God, into the kingdom of God. I think one of the things I've noticed about our world lately is there seems to be a lot of debate going on. There seems to be a lot of maybe emotional conversation happening between people. People are, are shooting back to these answers, not in a steady way, trusting that God's truth will be revealed, but, but out of emotion, out of passion, out of anger. Right? And, and people have done studies on this and found that facts and figures and, and emotional debates and hot, hot arguments are not what change people's minds, but, but relationships and experiences are what change people's minds. I think that makes what Jesus is saying to Pilate all the more impressive to me today, that he's not getting sucked into mere intellectual debate, but that he is steadfast, that God's kingdom is coming, is here, and that God's truth will be revealed in time. And Jesus has been helping people experience the kingdom of God, right? Jesus has been healing people. Jesus has been hanging out with, with the outcasts. Jesus has been trying to reorder society. And that is what so, is so convincing about Jesus' life. Not, not debates that he got into, but the way he helped people experience real life. The way he sat with widows and healed lepers, right? And those experiences, people were excited to go and share about. And those experiences through the relationships of the people healed spread this message of the gospel more than any debate ever could. It's, it's the gospel being more so about being right with one another, being right with God, than being right. And it's not that Jesus never says truth, right? It's not that he doesn't use his words. He uses his words a lot, but he, he uses his words to show the truth of God. He trusts that the truth will be revealed in time. So, so Jesus says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. He doesn't say, note, my kingdom is not in this world, but he says, my kingdom is not of this world, right? So, so the stuff of this world and the stuff of God's kingdom are different. This is a very broad statement, right? This is an economic statement, which is to say the way that we handle money in our world, the, the scarcity that we so often fall into believing exists in the world is not the stuff of the kingdom of God. God's kingdom is of abundance. God's kingdom is a place where you trust that there will be enough tomorrow. And so you make sure everyone has what they need today. Those are not worldly economics. Those are divine economics. And God's kingdom is, is a place of community, right? It is a place where everybody's view matters. And so it's, it's not our world where, where taking care of yourself is often seen as our first responsibility. And it's not our world where only one person can succeed. God's kingdom is a place where we all succeed by being together. Where, where God shows up because we are right with one another. And Jesus spoke the truth of God to the powers at the time, right? Power in God's kingdom is found in vulnerability. It's found in the infant that we are anticipating with the new year. It's not found in, in weapons or in money or in governments or in all the things that are powerful in our world. Because in our world, often power structures are pyramid-like, right? One or two people at the top and then it flows down. In God's kingdom, in God's view of the world, power is found when we're vulnerable with each other. And when we hang out with the most vulnerable, right? So Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. He's speaking truth and trusting that God will reveal over time what that truth is to Pilate. He's not debating him. He's telling him that there is a better way. And if that sends him to the cross, well, then that leads to resurrection. He's refusing to engage in intellectual debate because he trusts that God's experience, that relationships with each other will reveal truth to power. And that 
got me thinking about things, about truths that have been revealed to us in the past year or so. I think about how when we had to socially distance, which we're still doing to some extent, when we had to be physically separate, separate from one another, we all came to a deeper understanding that it is not good for humans to be alone, right? I, I think we maybe knew that on some level, but the number of individuals who have said we have recognized the pain of loneliness, the number of communities who have recognized the pain of loneliness has increased incredibly, right? This truth that was revealed in our creation account, when God created one human, God said that it was not good for humans to be alone. This truth that is as old as time has been revealed to us again in time. I think about how hard it was at one point to get toilet paper because some people got afraid they wouldn't have enough toilet paper and so they started hoarding this resource and how that made it more difficult for those who weren't hoarding, right? I think about the truth that has been revealed that when one takes more than one need, one needs, it affects others. I think about how we handle people of different genders nowadays, right? How, how it is no longer laughable that a woman would be in a workplace and how, how so many men are, are learning and come to be expected to be a part of their children's lives, right? I think about how those roles have shifted to reflect more so the gifts and abilities of an individual than, than a expectation of a gender, right? A truth that has been revealed over time that all of God's children are created with wonderful gifts and that they have something to offer to the world. And so, as we start this new church year, I wonder if the question isn't, have I been a good person and will I be a good person? But I wonder if the question is, what truths about Christ have I revealed to the world? What truths have I shown in my love? What truths have I declared? What, what truths have I stood up for? And what truths will I reveal? this year. Amen. And now let us pray for our world, the church, our community, and for all people according to their need. God who creates, we thank you for the beauty of our creation. We sit in such a 
stunning place, God. And as we see the seasons turn from fall to winter and the leaves fall from the trees, remind us that we but rest in you. Open our eyes to the beauty and experience of your creation that we might treasure it and care for it. Lord of mercy and grace, reveal your love in us. God, we thank you for Jesus who came as a teacher, but who taught not only with words, but showed us the way to live and be in the world. Help us to not merely hear, but be doers of the word, following in Jesus' footsteps, walking in his way. Lord of mercy and grace, reveal your love in us. Moving spirit, you are beautiful. And the way you cause us to reach out into the world in which we live, we thank you that you have prodded us and provoked us to love and to acts of service. Open our hearts again to serve our neighbors by loving them, accompanying them, and partnering them wherever they may be. For those people in this season, as the weather turns chilly, who are cold, open our hearts and our homes that we might reach out with real help to those in need. Lord of mercy and grace, reveal your love in us. Spirit, you are also surrounding all of those women and men who are struggling right now, who are feeling lonely and afraid, anxious, concerned. We know that your spirit grounds us again in you and that your reign comes again. God, we pray that you would give them experience of your love and life, that they would see that your spirit is surrounding them, that they are not alone, that they need not be afraid, but trust in you. God, for those who are grieving and who are sick, give them real help and experience of real healing through doctors, nurses, staff, friends, therapists, and others. Lord of mercy and grace, reveal your love in us. For all these things, and whatever else you see that we need, grant us in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Strengthened in hope, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On this reign of Christ Sunday, we remind ourselves that we pray every week for the reign of God to come here on earth as it is in heaven. See, God's vision for us isn't to experience um, a, a life now that isn't a part of God's reign and that we wait for a future. But God believes and Christ shows us that the reign begins now. And so we come to this meal, bread and wine, fed for the journey, experiencing the grace of God in this place in this time, because the gifts of God are free. We invite you to share a sign, uh, to share communion with one another, uh, simply receiving the bread and the wine, saying the, uh, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. If you are on your own, know this, the body of Christ is given for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The more we experience life as God's family, the more we give ourselves to the restoration of creation and peace among all peoples. As we enter into the world, let us step forward in faith and toward God's vision for love and wholeness for all. So love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the triune God. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.